35 years ago today, Donald Trump's lawyer, Roy Cohn, was disbarred for dishonesty, fraud, deceit, and misrepresentation. One of the weird sidebars of the Trump presidency and, in fact, the Russia investigation was that we learned a lot about how much Donald Trump, as president, used to wax rhapsodic about how much he missed Roy Cohn and how much he wished his current lawyers were more like Roy Cohn. This, for example, is from the long-sought congressional testimony of Trump's White House counsel, Don McGahn, which happened finally in Congress um, just a couple of weeks ago. Quote, did the president raise the issue of why you took notes during meetings? Answer, yes. Yes, he did. He asked about, why do I take notes? And what was your reaction to that? Answer. So his side of the story is, he says, what are these notes? Why do you take notes? Lawyers don't take notes. Never had a lawyer take notes. And I said, look, I take notes because, you know, I'm a real lawyer. Real lawyers take notes. It's a way to keep track of things. And he invoked, you know, Roy Cohn apparently didn't take notes. Question. So it was your understanding that he thought great lawyers like Roy Cohn did not take notes? Answer. He said that, yes. Not only did I think that, I heard him say that, yes. And this was not the first time that Roy Cohn has sort of, the ghost of Roy had come into the Oval Office. So it didn't seem to be a point worth responding to. And, you know, he's the president. He gets the last word. Question. What was your reaction to being compared to Roy Cohn? Answer. My reaction? Well, this wasn't the first time, you know. I really didn't want to be compared with Roy, Roy Cohn. Why not? I didn't want to be compared to Roy Cohn in any way, shape, or form. I understand he was, you know, a brilliant lawyer in certain ways, but he had some ethical trouble later in his career. And by ethical trouble, do you mean he was ultimately disbarred for unethical conduct? Answer, yes, yes. You know, I may have mentioned that at some point in some of these exchanges, I don't recall specifically, but Roy Cohn was not really my role model. So saying I was no Roy Cohn, in a weird way, I thought that's good. He doesn't think I'm that sort of lawyer. Question. But the president was suggesting that you should be more like Roy Cohn, who was a great lawyer, correct? Answer. Well, you know, I think he had already made his point that he really had a fondness for Roy Cohn. On this date 35 years ago, Roy Cohn was disbarred. Uh, another one of President Trump's personal lawyers, Michael Cohen, would, of course, go on after that to also be disbarred. In this case, it was a consequence of Mr. Cohen being convicted of multiple felonies, including a felony campaign finance hush money scheme that federal prosecutors say he was directed to commit by former President Trump. They called individual one in that case. So President Trump's personal lawyer and the Trump Organization lawyer, Roy Cohen, disbarred President Trump's personal lawyer and Trump Organization lawyer, Michael Cohen, disbarred. And now today, on the 35-year anniversary of Roy Cohn's disbarment, today we have yet another personal attorney for Donald Trump being <laughs> suspended. <laughs> suspended by the state of New York from the practice of law, pending a proceeding which will decide if he is permanently disbarred. Rudy Giuliani's law license was suspended today by a unanimous panel of judges in the appellate division of the New York State Court. They said, quote, we conclude that there is uncontroverted evidence that respondent, meaning Giuliani, communicated demonstrably false and misleading statements to courts, lawmakers and the public at large in his capacity as lawyer for former President Donald Trump and the Trump campaign in connection with Trump's failed effort at reelection in 2020. These false statements were made to improperly bolster respondent's narrative that due to widespread voter fraud, victory in the 2020 U.S. presidential election was stolen from his client. We conclude that respondent's conduct immediately threatens the public interest and warrants interim suspension from the practice of law pending further proceedings. Now, the, the pending further proceedings part there is important. Mr. Giuliani's license uh, to practice law is suspended. He is not permanently disbarred, at least not at this point. He, he may yet have hearings before the court at which he can contest this decision and seek to have his law license reinstated. But the court today went out of their way in this unanimous opinion uh, to say that they, they don't think he's going to prevail even after there are hearings. They said, quote, we find that there is evidence of continuing misconduct. The underlying offense is incredibly serious and the uncontroverted misconduct in itself will likely result in substantial permanent sanctions at the conclusion of these disciplinary proceedings. Substantial permanent sanctions, meaning this is an interim suspension, but ultimately when we get to the end of this, he's likely to be disbarred. I think what's almost hard to wrap your head around, though, just in terms of the history here, um, 
is the consistency over time. How much what Rudy Giuliani is today found to have done, what he lost his law license for today, how much of it is what Roy Cohn got famous for doing in the 1950s with Joe McCarthy, right? I mean, go back to the movie, right? Go back to Manchurian Candidate. There's the Joe McCarthy stand-in. There's Johnny Eisland in the movie. And he's actually kind of literally quoting Joe McCarthy <laughs> from real life. But, you know, but he's talking about the supposed exact number of communists that he has ferreted out and that he knows the truth about and he's demanding answers for. Even if he couldn't keep the numbers straight, since he had made them up. Still, it sounds good when you cite specific numbers. It sounds better when you can remember what the number was, <laughs> but still, it lands with a good effect. In Rudy Giuliani's loss of his law license today, it's actually the exact same thing. Um, the court today found that he, for example, made up wildly different, inconsistent, and all fake numbers of supposedly dead people who supposedly voted in Philadelphia. Quote, respondent repeatedly stated that dead people voted in Philadelphia in order to discredit the results of the vote in that city. He quantified the amount of dead people who voted at various times as 8,021, while also reporting the number as 30,000. <laughs> Mr. Giuliani, um, according to the court, also made up wildly divergent, totally different, very specific numbers of uh, allegedly underage illegal voters in the state of Georgia. Quote, at various times, the respondent claimed that 65,000 or 66,000 or 165,000 underage voters illegally voted in the Georgia 2020 election. The Georgia Office of the Secretary of State undertook an investigation of this claim. It compared the list of all the people who voted in Georgia to their full birthdays. The audit revealed that there were zero, zero underage voters in the 2020 election. While a small number of voters, four, had requested a ballot prior to turning 18, all four of them had turned 18 by the time the election was held in November 2020. Mr. Giuliani also apparently made up specific but wildly divergent and all fake numbers of supposedly dead voters in Georgia. Quote, respondent stated that dead people voted in Georgia during the 2020 presidential election. He claimed that he had the names of 800, the names of 800 dead people who voted based upon the number of people who had passed away in 2020. Respondent further stated that this number wasn't 800. It was really in the thousands. At another point, he claimed that 6,000 people, 6,000, specifically 6,000 dead people had voted. On December 20th, excuse me, December 22nd, 2020, during a War Room podcast with former Trump advisor Steve Bannon, respondent Giuliani stated that 6,000 dead people voted. <laughs> Not a month later, on January 3rd, 2021, during an episode of something called Uncovering the Truth, respondent stated that the number of dead people who voted was 10,515. Two days later, on January 5th, during another War Room podcast with Steve Bannon, respondent stated that 800 dead people voted in the Georgia election. Rudy Giuliani. Rudy Giuliani at one point was the number three official in the United States Department of Justice. Rudy Giuliani was, of course, the mayor of New York City. He, of course, was the U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York. He was the top federal prosecutor in Manhattan. He is now under federal criminal investigation by that office that he used to lead. And as of today, he is no longer currently licensed to practice law in the state of New York. This happens to everybody who gets into Trump's orbit. You notice that? <laughs> 